A new report says that China is separating minority Uyghur children from their families and placing them in boarding schools while their parents are in detention camps. The report was conducted by an independent researcher, partly commissioned by the BBC. It offers new insight into China's so-called re-education campaign of the Muslim population. Matt Rivers is following this from Beijing. Well, new research today has shed some light on a question many have been asking for a very long time. What happens to the children of the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who have been detained in these so-called re-education camps in Western China? A new report by independent German researcher Adrian Zenz, commissioned in part by the BBC, alleges that over the last few years, China has built a vast new array of boarding schools where children are placed after their parents are detained by the authorities. Zenz, who has emerged recently as a leading expert on China's system of camps in the northwest region of Xinjiang, used a conjunction of open source documents, propaganda, and also interviews with former detainees for his work, in which he argues that these schools often look more like prisons with high walls, electric fences, surveillance, and alarm systems. In certain areas of southern Xinjiang, Zen says that preschool enrollment growth rates were more than 12 times higher than the national average. Evidence, he says, of the fact that so many of these children's parents have been taken away. For years now, hundreds of thousands of Muslim ethnic minorities, up to two million in some estimates, have been detained in China's sprawling network of re-education camps, usually without charge, trial, or the ability to leave. China's government claims the camps are combating extremism in the region, but critics say the camps are nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to eliminate Muslim culture and ideology in Xinjiang, arguing the camps are nothing more than brainwashing centers where torture and abuse are rampant. The question of child-parent separation is not new in that sense. Journalists and rights groups have long thought there could be a separate crisis involving children, simply because so many of their parents have been detained. CNN has heard stories in the past few months from relatives of people inside the camps terrified about the fate of their children. Zenz's research, however, is the first comprehensive report to date on the likely scale of this coordinated state initiative. Requests for comment from China's government weren't immediately answered, but a senior official with Xinjiang's propaganda department spoke to the BBC and denied there were many families where both parents had been detained. Xu Guixiang told the broadcaster, quote, if all family members have been sent to vocational training, then that family must have a severe problem. I've never seen such a case. Still, it's a relatively simple equation here. If so many adults are being put in these camps, something has to happen to their kids. And with this new report, we have some more insight into the fate of Xinjiang's children. Matt Rivers, CNN, Beijing. And we've now received a response from China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It claims the Uyghur re-education camps are in Xinjiang. They're regulated as boarding schools. Trainees can go home at weekends, they say, and their children can be looked after by other family members. The Foreign Ministry went on to say, quote, there is no so-called orphan issue. Adrian Zenz, the author of the report, joins us now from Germany. Adrian, very good to have you on the programme. Thanks for joining us. Um, for viewers that are not following this as closely, what are the reasons why the Chinese state is partaking in these re-education camps? And how credible do you think the evidence is? How are they able to dismiss this as research made up out of thin air? The Uyghurs have always been a people that are, have been difficult to govern by the Chinese state because their identity is Central Asian, they are Muslim, and they feel much closer to Istanbul or Turkey than to Beijing. The Mao Zedong occupied the territory in 1949, and the Uyghurs have um, given violent resistance as a response. Um, my own research is based in great detail on the government's own statements and documents, on all kinds of different sources from educational statistics to local level government documents to region wide policy. I would imagine it would be quite difficult for the Chinese state to refute my findings in detail if they were challenged to do so. Adrian, what is the ultimate objective, to your mind, of the Chinese state here? We can understand from your research what's currently going on. What are they hoping to achieve? They're hoping to raise an entire new generation of Uyghurs who are obedient to the state believe in party ideology instead of Islam and are just very similar in language and culture to the Han Chinese. 
more integrated than their parents.